Hey, how's everybody doing today? My name's Bill Schroeder. Some of you probably already know that. We really appreciate the subscribers and we're really feeling the love. We appreciate all the positive comments. We're trying to keep this going. You know what day it is? It's Technical Tip Tuesday. Got an interesting case for you. There's a pretty active discussion about a case of arcuate ligament compression syndrome. And in fact, some new data was recently published on the possible symptomatology of these patients. Well, it reminded me of a case that I did many years ago of a significant arcuate ligament compression of a common celiac and superior mesenteric trunk. So I thought I'd present that for you. Well, the patient was a 67-year-old Caucasian female who was referred for a loud abdominal brewery. She really had no GI symptoms. She did have a 15-year history of well-controlled hypertension with normal renal function. She denied any claudication. She had a remote history of tobacco abuse, but quit a number of years ago. She has a positive family history of coronary artery disease, but denied any personal coronary artery disease. She did have a history of cardiac arrhythmia. Here's her physical exam. She had equal brachial pulses. You can see what the blood pressures were, uh, essentially uh, pretty similar. She had easily palpable femoral pulses, uh, equal right to left. She had a very loud abdominal brewery, but no femoral or cervical brewies. So I lay the transducer down and see right away this vessel arising from the aorta. There was a prominent systolic brewery that we could see within the tissues. Only a single vessel could be identified coming off the aorta at this level. So I drop a spectrum in there. Holy cow, peak systolic velocity is greater than 400 centimeters per second and end diastolic velocity of about 114. Certainly consistent with a significant stenosis. So we went out and identified both the hepatic and the splenic arteries. Wow, look at these waveforms. Not only pretty low velocity, especially the splenic artery, but look at that systolic upstroke. See how delayed that is? Uh, highly specific for a proximal flow limiting stenosis. So highly abnormal hepatic and splenic arteries. So I followed what I thought was the SMA. It paralleled the aorta. Remember, only a single vessel coming off the aorta, but holy cow, look at this waveform. Very dampened waveform, consistent with a proximal flow limiting stenosis. Think about what a normal SMA should look like. High resistance flow. So this is clearly very abnormal. When I teach people about following vessels, virtually any vessel, I always stress whenever you see a branch or collateral, you always want to take a minute and see what direction the flow is going in that collateral. Is it an inflow or an outflow? Well, in this case, lo and behold, here I see a vessel uh, that actually comes into the SMA. This is going the wrong direction. So retrograde SMA branch. Again, low resistance. Remember, mesenteric circulation in a fasting patient should be high resistance. So clearly very abnormal. So I followed the aorta distally looking for the inferior mesenteric artery, and here it is. Actually quite large, it jumped out at me. Arguably, you could say there's a stenosis here. However, we don't really have criteria for IMA. And additionally, I could not find a focal flow acceleration. This was a large artery with high velocity flows throughout all the segment of it I could see. Probably just compensatory flow. So it's my common practice, anytime I find a celiac stenosis, I'll reevaluate that when the patient has a very deep inspiration. 
when I have that, this patient do that, we can actually see things a little bit better. And in fact, we can see that common trunk, the celiac coming here, and the superior mesenteric here. Just a quick view of that vessel in transverse. You can see no appreciable stenosis with that deep inspiration. So let's revisit the waveforms. Here with the deep inspiration, we see from that original uh, spectral waveform, we have a much more normal appearing waveform, significantly decreased peak systolic velocity, now 213, and diastolic velocity, 53. How about the hepatic artery with a deep inspiration? Still somewhat low velocity, but note that greatly improved systolic upstroke. Here's the splenic artery. Wow, what a dramatic change. With the deep inspiration, we see a pretty normal waveform. Look at that systolic upstroke compared to that very abnormal resting waveform that we got initially. And finally, let's take another look at that retrograde SMA branch with a deep inspiration. You see, not only does it reverse, but it pretty much normalizes into a high resistance flow pattern. Pretty striking. So our conclusion, this lady had a common trunk of the celiac and superior mesenteric arteries with a dramatic arcuate ligament compression of that common trunk. She also had what we deemed was a normal large inferior mesenteric artery supplying compensatory flow. Any guesses where that compensatory flow would get to from the IMA? That's right, two main collateral pathways, the arc of Rielin and the marginal artery of Drummond. Median arcuate ligament compression is a rather unusual but well-documented phenomena in which the arcuate ligament compresses the celiac axis. This case is rather unusual in that it occurs on a common trunk, and particularly based on the distal waveforms, the degree of obstruction was quite severe. There is, however, continued debate over its significance and ultimately its impact on intestinal circulation. Many times we find this in entirely asymptomatic patients. Upon questioning, this lady appeared to be entirely asymptomatic and thus is likely very well collateralized. Another little tidbit is further auscultation revealed that that very loud brewery disappeared pretty completely upon deep inspiration and that's very consistent with our study results. So your technical tip for this Tuesday is anytime you encounter a celiac artery stenosis, always reevaluate that patient when they take a deep inspiration. See if it resolves. That allows you to determine if in fact this is a true intrinsic stenosis or in fact median arcuate ligament compression. Hope you enjoyed Technical Tip Tuesday. You know what to do. Like, subscribe, stay tuned for next week. If you need any Category 1 CME, please visit virtualbanecenter.com. Have a good week.